And now on BBC Two, a special pro celebrity edition of Granada's classic quiz show, University Challenge. Former contestants like Stephen Fry and John Simpson take on a top team of today's undergraduates. But first, a brief history of the long-lived quiz for eggheads. On September the 21st, 1962, University Challenge started for 10, but ran for 25 years, becoming Britain's longest-running and most arcane game show. University Challenge Tournament, asking the questions, Van the Gascoigne. University Challenge, asking the questions, Van the Gascoigne. University Challenge, asking the questions, Van the Gascoigne. University Challenge was an unexpected hit, attracting at its peak 20 million viewers a week. That's one and a half times Granada's current top-rated game show, The Krypton Factor. What word meaning literally nodding is used for the oscillation of the poles about their mean position <coughs> caused by a periodic variation in the precession of the Earth's axis. It is... Nictitation? No, bad luck. It's nutation. And the questions were hard, but the rules were simple, and as regular addicts knew, hardly changed at all over the years. Now to start the game, same rules as usual. Both teams race to answer a starter question, which they do by signalling like this. Ten points if they give the right answer, and a chance for the whole team to try for a bonus question, and that can be worth up to 40 points. On a bonus... The 35 starter questions worth ten points each were typed on blue cards. Contestants had to answer on their own. There was famously no conferring. 600 pounds. No, Jesus, can you take it? No conferring. Locomotive engineers. No, from impended lungs to full question of Bradford, no conferring. Norma. No, from impended Newcastle, full question of lungs to no conferring. Oh, curses, I know. Inevitably, the pressure proved almost too much for many contestants. No, no, no. Newcastle Lion. Sorry. Have to hurry you. <laughs> it uh, is. Oh, good heavens, I saw this. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, it is... St. Hilda's Gold. Yes, sir. Um, the Manny Doe Cartoons, Hoffman, Gerard very, Hoffman. Very well done, very well done. <laughs> we got you, Gerard Hoffman. A bonus question typed on Bamber's pink card was worth 15 or 20 points and could be discussed amongst the team. Which range of mountains is the opening called the Cilician Gates through which Alexander the Great took his army? It's the Alps. No, 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 it's not. Any offers? The Alps. No. It was? The Alps. No, the Taurus. <laughs> no. Uh, from... Run over, um, run over by bicycle. No, 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 no. Run over by bicycle. Was he? Run over by what? No, no. No, no, no hang on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> one, one of them died. No, radium poisoning. Radium poisoning. No, he was run over by, by a dray. There were, of course, the favourite questions. Which French poet, novelist, and dramatist wrote Les Miserables? You live Donald Smith. Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo and ten points. Victor Hugo. Five points. Uh, Hugo. Uh, Hugo. No, Chateaubriand. Camus. Camus. Camus, five points. Camus. Camus, five mm -hmm. points. Voltaire. Voltaire, five points. Emile Zola. Emile Zola, ten points. John le Carre. John le Carre, ten points. Henry, Henry James. James. Five points. Wordsworth. No, Thomas Hardy. Yeah. Saul Bellow. Saul Bellow. Kafka. Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn. Alan Bennett. Correct, a private yes. function. Yeah. Ten points to Keyboard. For some, exposure on the program brought instant acclaim. But first, For others, week, the taste of fame proved addictive. The real problem, which is some poor benighted minister sitting at a desk as I have done. Having sweated it out over three rounds, winning teams battled their way through quarterfinals, semifinals, and final for the coveted University Challenge prizes. There was a wide range over the years. A dictionary, Bible, a copy of the Rake's Progress, a glass sculpture, a rose bush, a video recorder, and a punt called Bamba. For many years, the holders of the lowest score were not students at all, but their lecturers. In 1964, the dons of New College Oxford, including the distinguished philosopher Sir Freddie A.J. Eyre, lost to their own students by the embarrassing margin of 250 to 50. The split screen was almost always a technological effect, but for a brief spell in the mid-80s, University Challenge experimented with a two-tier set which really was built on two levels they quickly reverted to the traditional method. 
Univ Mortimer. Statistics. Statistics, 10 points. Perhaps the most infamous incident to have been wiped from the University Challenge archive under mysterious circumstances was the game between Manchester University and Downing College, Cambridge, in which Manchester answered Trotsky to every question Trotsky. as a protest against Trotsky. Oxbridge Trotsky. bias. Trotsky. 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 Was there bias? In 23 series, teams from Oxford and Cambridge chalked up 13 victories, while the rest of the entire British university system could muster only 10. It was a trend which didn't go unnoticed. Hello and welcome to another edition of University Challenge. This week, the teams represent Footlights College, Oxbridge. <laughs> yes, that's the spirit. The students, the sets, the mascots came and went, but at the heart of the show was the omniscient and apparently ageless host, Bamba Gascoigne. And here is your first starter for 10. Your first starter for 10. Starter for 10. Starter for 10. Starter for 10. First starter for 10. Starter for 10. Starter for 10. Bamba Gascoigne, Eton and Magdalen Cambridge, was plucked from the quiet confines of the spectator to become the icon of generations of undergraduates. Fortified only by an Eccles cake, which he insisted on eating just before recording, he handled the shows with consummate skill. Duckbill platypus. Duckbill platypus is one on the Academy of Spiny Andrew Zelda, and that gives you five points behind a bonus of you. One in two minutes to go, and here's a starter again. The Duke of Norfolk. Correct. Hereditary Marshal, Earl Marshall, and much else a starter. A bonus of 15 to UCL. He enforced the rules with the strictness of a university examiner. Are you further away from the pole star? than it really is. <laughs> no, I can't, I don't think I can accept that. Five more minutes to Queen's, full question to Keel, no conferring. But, but he gave credit where credit was due. Especially that of Trinity Hall MacPhail. Mens rea. Uh, uh, mens, now wait a minute, I wonder if it does actually mean, it doesn't literally mean the same. Um, give me a <laughs> <laughs> It's not the, uh, translated the same. What, what was the, what's the English phrase? It's an English phrase I'm asking. Guilty mind. What? Guilty mind. Yes, that's, that's exactly, that's the, 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 the literal translation, but there is a precise, I, I think actually... Malice of Yes, right, we've got there. You clearly, yes. <laughs> Finally, in the mid-80s, London Weekend Television dropped the game from its schedule. Shortly after, the rest of the ITV network followed suit, and Bamba Gascoigne asked his last starter for ten. From our new champions, Keeble. Goodbye. Goodbye. And from me until maybe we hope another series sometime in the future. But that's the end of this one. From then until another time, perhaps goodbye. I mean, I'll go and say goodbye to the teams and congratulate them. Fantastic performance. Well done. University Challenge Pro Celebrity Match. Asking the questions, Bamba Gascoigne. Hello and welcome again to University Challenge. After too long a gap, five years to be precise, but tonight we have a very special University Challenge for you. We'll walk down memory lane in a pro celebrity match. We've rustled up four distinguished old gentlemen from the show's past. You'll meet them in a minute. And to play against them, we have asked a team from Keeble College, Oxford, to come along because Keeble were the final champions of our last series in 1987. So in a sense, they are the reigning champions, and let's meet them first, Keeble. Richard Arthur from Rochdale, reading geography. Hello, my name's Joe McDonough from Weybridge, reading history. And their captain? I'm Alexander Newman from Hackney in London, and I'm reading maths. Andy Holdsworth from Plymouth, reading classics. The graduates. Alistair Little, who read mainly Elizabeth David and gave up archaeology for the kitchen stove. Well, as he says, Alistair was head chef at the restaurant 192 until 1985 and now has his own restaurant in Soho, Alistair Little's. And he read archaeology and anthropology at Downing College and appeared <laughs> in 1970. There he is. He's had a slight <laughs> haircut since. <laughs> And now we have John Simpson. I suppose nowadays I just mostly read auto cue. Well, we don't believe that. He never reads the auto cue. He's the foreign affairs editor, as we all know, of the BBC, and he's just published a book about his time in the Gulf um, War. And he read English and appeared for Magdalen College, Cambridge, in 1965. And now their captain. 
Uh, Stephen Fry, I ponce about embarrassingly on stage and screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, most recently on the screen, as many of you would have seen, in Peter's Friends, and of course very often in a bit of Fry and Laurie, and in Jeeves and Worcester. Now, Stephen read English at Queen's, <laughs> and uh, some strong supporters here from Queen's, and appeared in 1980, but he's the only one of our contestants tonight whose previous appear appearance has survived on film. The man who partnered George Burns in the film <laughs> version of The Sunshine Boy, Boys. Queen's Fry. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Are you? I'm never going to matter. What? Walter Matter. Just I sorry. thought I'd just made a group of he was always willing to have a go. And now the fourth member of their team. Uh, Charles Moore, now working in journalism. And Charles Moore was editor of The Spectator for much of the 1980s, then moved to the deputy editor of The Daily Telegraph, and this year became editor of The Sunday Telegraph. He read history at Trinity, and he appeared in 1978. And there he is in his pristine oh. early self. Oh. All right, so we've met our <laughs> oldies and our youngies, and we're ready to go. Now, the rules, one explains this time in a quiz game, but in fact, who can remember the rules? All we can remember is start of a ten, the phrase that survived. We'll <laughs> busk it from there on. So here, all eight of you, fingers on the buzzer, is your first start of a ten. And it's a Christmas starter for a start. In whose book, published in 1973, does Father Christmas grumble about the dreadfully cold... Keeble Newman. Raymond Briggs. Raymond Briggs, yeah. correct, Father Christmas. <laughs> conditions that we have to work in. All right, now who said in 1750, and to whom? You'll need both parts. I'll come no more behind your scenes, David, for the silk stockings and white bosoms of your actresses excite my amorous propensities. Right, who said that, and to which David? 1750. It was Dr. Johnson to David Garrick. And secondly, which children's mm. author created the nine-year-old red-headed orphan Pippi Longstocking, who has superhuman strength but is chronically untidy? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have known that either, not, not in my stocking. Astrid Lindgren it was. And last, which American wrote a group of novels called Leather Stocking Tales from the deer sting legi deer skin leggings of their hero, Natty Bumpo? It was... <laughs> No, I don't know. Good. Nope. Go for it, go for it. <laughs> Mark Twain? No, James Fenimore Cooper. And they're ahead by 10 points, and here's another start of a 10. Whose obituary in the Times in 1992 said that he animated the bawdy tradition of the seaside... Graduates Fry. Uh, Benny Hill, I Benny think. Hill is correct. 10 points. Well interrupted. A bonus of 15 for the graduates. Thank you. Say goodbye. <laughs> And here's your bonus of 15. First, what was the final track on Paul McCartney's 1982 Tug of War album? A track on which Stevie Wonder sung um, a, s a song that became a number one hit Was when it released as a single. Yeah. Ebony and Ivory. Ebony and Ivory, correct, five points. Second, the term, the term Chris Elephantine means an object that contains ivory and what else? Gold. Gold, five points. And lastly, the first Book of Kings. In an account of Solomon's wealth, it says once in three years, came the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory, and what two other commodities? Apes and peacocks. Apes and peacocks. Apes and peacocks yeah. is correct. Yeah. Ten po five points there. The full 15 there to the oldies, <laughs> the graduates. And here... <laughs> here is a starter again. Which author, born Catherine Fawcett, is more often borrowed from public libraries than any other? Graduates Fry. Uh, Catherine Cookson. Catherine Cookson, 10 points to the graduates and a bonus of 15. First, which London bookseller, one of the Lon Oxford University printers, made a fortune out of South Sea bubble stock and with it endowed the hospital named after him? Uh, Thomas Bartholomew no, Guy. Uh, um, <laughs> Thomas Bartholomew Guy. Oh, it's just near Guy. the spectator. What the hell is it? Oh, uh, great. So how are you? No. Uh, uh, guy. Grace. Quorum. Quorum. Wish you won't, Captain. Quorum. 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 Wish you won't, Captain. Oh, dear. Yes, guy. Well, guy. Well trusted guy. yourself. It was a guy named Guy, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely right. There's a captain with confidence. Everyone shouting quorum at him. It was Guy. Five points. 
Second, what is the name of the trilogy of novels by Evelyn Waugh of which Guy Crouchback is the hero? Officer, officer, and, officer, officer and gentleman. Sword of Honor. Sword, Sword of Honor. Sword of Honor. Sword, Sword, Sword of Honor. Honor. Sword of Honor is correct. Yes, sorry. Officers and gentlemen is the third <laughs> volume in it, but Sword of Honor <laughs> is the title <laughs> of the trilogy. <laughs> and five points. And last, in which 1992 film did the nightclub singer called Dolores teach a choir of nun nuns Sister to sing a religious act. interpretation of yeah. My Guy? While she hides out in the convent after witnessing a murder. Sister Act. Sister Act, correct, starring Woofy Goldberg, five points. And now we go to our music question. Here's a music starter for ten points. I want you to name this piece of music and its composer. Here it is. Graduate Simpson. Debussy. Yes, the piece of music. L'après-midi d'une forme. Correct. Prelude à l'après-midi d'une forme by Debussy. Ten points by, to, to the graduates. <laughs> and there's no holding them at the moment, but here is a music bonus of 15 points. Three pieces of music with a time of day in the title. Five points each just for the time of day. And here's the first. Chelsea morning. Chelsea morning. Chelsea morning. Uh, sorry, not, not morning. No, it is night, in fact. It's Joni Mitchell, this flight tonight. And oh, second, the composer, right heart is wrong. Right heart, yeah. the composer of this one was the leading member of the second Viennese school. What time of day in his piece? Here it is. <laughs> oh, it's a Verklärte Nacht. Verklärte Nacht, is it? Yes, Verklärte Nacht is exactly the title of the piece, so night is the answer, yes, but I'm going to yes. take it that you knew what it meant as well. <laughs> yes. Five points, Schoenberg, Verklärte Nacht. And last of five points, this one. Here it is. Round midnight? Round, is it round midnight? Is it Thelonious Monk? It's round midnight. Uh, no, obviously not. I, I'm going to be strict with you as you're in the lead. It is, in fact, night again, but it is Miles Davis. Oh, Nuit okay. sur les Champs Elysees. Night on the Champs Elysees. But I'm going to be strict with you. I should really have insisted you know the piece as well as you're so far ahead. But it's well, well, <laughs> well attempted. All right, and now we go back to ordinary starters and bonuses. A bonus of 15 coming here as a starter again. I want to know. Oh, God, lost it. Here it is. What championship did Lennox Lewis win this month? Graduates Little. WBC. World WBC, what weight? Well, heavyweight. Hey, well, WBC heavyweight, correct. Oh. Uh, um, actually, I, I, I must be strict with I must be strict with this. The question does go on to say and how. So um, by default. By default, correct, because Riddick Bow failed to arrange to meet him. Mm. Ten points to the graduates. A bonus of fifteen. First, which Englishman is the central character of the prisoner of Zenda? Um, his name is uh, uh, Rudolf Rassendil. Rudolf Rassendil, Rudolf Rassendil five points. Second, in which field did the Hungarian Rudolf von Laban make his name early this century? L-A-B-A-N. Oh, he was Science. a d designer at dresses. No, no. he was, a d he, he was a in, in the dance field and he made a system, lab notation of noting down the steps of choreography. Oh. And last, what would you be doing if you performed a Rudolph, a Randolph, a Fliffus, and a Barani out? Take away curry? It sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that for the Sunday Telegraph? <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it was taking away curry. Uh -huh. Taking away curry, that's a, that's a very uh, good uh, idea. That's an <laughs> it would, it's some kind of that sort of program, you'd have... Some kind of uh, skiing. Um, no, it's trampolining, you get the uh, idea. But I must uh, say, I like <laughs> takeaway, <laughs> different sorts of takeaway <laughs> curry, barani art. That was a very good idea. We're halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway through the show with the score. At the moment, the graduates have put on a big spurt to get to <coughs> 80, with the keeble at the moment only at 10. But there's lots of time to go. And here's a starter again. What is the term for a plant which grows attached to the stem or leaves of another plant. Keeble Arthur. A parasite. I'm going to be, allow you to go on because uh, you are, I'm going to, you're going to hear a bit more of the question before you answer me, but it's not a parasite because it takes no material from the plant to which it is attached. You can change your mind if you, if you know the other answer. It is... Is it something like paraphyte? No, no, and it goes over to the other team. You can buzz you're on your own. Graduates Little. little. Iliad. No, it's an epiphyte. It feeds no. on epiphyte. And another starter. Which Beverly Hills cop also came to... Keeble Arthur. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy yeah. came to America. <laughs> Beverly Hills. <laughs> All right, here we are. And a bonus again for the Keeble undergraduates. Who or what was Sir Geoffrey Hudson at the court of Henrietta Maria? He was a particular Jester. sort of entertainer. What sort? Uh, jester. Jester? Uh, he was a jester, but a very particular sort of jester. 
He certainly did some jesting, but what was what <laughs> differentiated from other jesters? <laughs> Mr. How are you? Juggler. Juggler. No, he was a dwarf. Second, who or what is Angus Hudson? Any answers? Mr. How are you? He's an actor. Uh, no, he's a character, I'm afraid. He is the butler in uh, Upstairs, Downstairs. And last, who or what is Mrs. Hudson, who seems to have entered this world in a story in 1887? Um, uh, the uh, cleaner for Sherlock Holmes. The cleaner for Sherlock Holmes is correct, oh, five points. <laughs> and here's another starter. I warn you that this one, I warn you that on this one, You'll have to answer immediately after your name is called, or it will be passed over. And I'm going to be strict about that. OK, here it is. All ready? What is the 15th letter of the alphabet? Graduate's fry. Oh. Well counted, Stephen. I must say, that is quite something. There is indeed a demonstration of quick thought. Well played. A bonus of 15 to the graduates. Obviously, our time is not setting in. <laughs> What art form, <laughs> Sorry, what I didn't art form did the German philosopher von Schelling call music in space as it were frozen music and Ruskin architecture, called the work of nations? Architecture. architecture. Five architecture. points. Second, which English building recently completed at the time did Hazlitt describe as a collection of stone pumpkins and pepper boxes? It seems as if the genius of architecture had at once the dropsy and the megrim. Brighton, Brighton Pavilion. Pavilion. Brighton Pavilion, correct, five points. And last, which famous modern building did Clive James describe as looking like a typewriter full of oyster shells? Sydney Opera House. Sydney Opera oh, House is correct, five points. Well done. There are over 100, 105, and here's the starter again. And this one is alphabet, again, groans all round. But Stephen may not necessarily get this one because it can take plenty of time on this, so his speed of thought won't necessarily help him. Already, think very hard. If A is for artichoke, and B is for because, and C is for careful, and D is for do, what might E be for? Keeble Arthur. Elephant. Elephant is correct. Well done, <laughs> surprise as the other seven are. The answer is they're a completely random selection of words. The only link was they all began with the letter I said, and elephant begins with E. <laughs> 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 Any word beginning with E would have done me. Well done, Keeble. All right, a bonus of 15 to Keeble. I want to know who was the best known person in the 1930s to have Warfield as her middle name? It was Mrs. Simpson who became the Duchess of Windsor, mm -hmm. married the king. Second, whom did we bury darkly at dead of night, the sods with our bayonets turning? Uh, First World War dead. No, it was Sir John Moore in the burial as Sir John Moore at Corona by Charles Wolfe. Now, you've had Moore and Simpson, so look over to the other side. 50-50 chance on this one. <laughs> what was the married name, the married surname, of the philanthropist Elizabeth Gurney, who was born in 1780? Um, Fry. Fry is correct, <laughs> not Little. She was Elizabeth Little, she was Elizabeth Fry. Fry. Five yeah. points there to Keeble. All right, our picture question. Here's a picture starter. You'll have to get all parts of this starter correct, or it will still be passed over, so take care. Here are three bridges. All of them with the same name. I want to know what's the name and where is each of the three bridges located? The three places. Graduates Fry. Um, bridge of Size. Yes. Pontry said Joe. Uh, Venice, Oxford, and Cambridge. Venice, Oxford, and Cambridge is absolutely wow. correct. Well yes. done indeed. <laughs> Full ten there to the graduates. And they're aiming to pull ahead again with less than five minutes to go now. And here we go. First, what colloquial term is used for a small, supposedly um, unreliable business, particularly in recent times in the airline ticket field. Bucket, bucket shop. A bucket shop, five points. Second, in which BBC sitcom is pretentious Mrs. Hyacinth Bouquet uh, keeping up portrayed by Patricia Routledge? Keeping up appearances. Keeping up appearances, five points. The last five points, in which Dickens novel is the shrewd detective Mr. Bucket a character? Uh, Bleak House. Bleak, ha Bleak House is correct. Very good indeed, and that brings you up to 125. And here is a starter again. Which president 
of the OUBC was a gold medal winner. Keeble McDonough. Johnny Searle. Is he president of the OUBC? I don't yeah. think he is. Is he? And he was Olympic gold this summer. I was oh, expecting, I, I must say, Matthew Pinson, but he's a president of the OUBC. Yeah, well, I will let you have it. All right. Thank you. I will let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> So many, so many gold medals, so many gold medal winners in rowing from Oxford. Matthew Pinson and Steve Redgrave won the Coxley pairs, and the Searle brothers won the Cox pairs. I frankly didn't know who was president of the OUBC, but I will believe you. Ten points to Keeble, and here is a bonus of 15. What term denotes the box-like device used in Baccarat to hold several packs of cards and allow the cards to be dispensed simply? Shoe. shoe. A shoe pipe. Well, they're good at that one. They really come alive. <laughs> Secondly, who reportedly said in the early 18th century, of which woman reportedly said in the early 18th century, the Duke returned from the wars today and did pleasure me in his top boot? Oh, now, the wife of a famous general of the early 18th century. Mr. Harry. Mrs. Wellington. <laughs> no. I said early 18th century, not 19th. Uh, the Duchess of Marlborough. Uh, and last of five points, who wrote the early 17th century play, The Shoemaker's Holiday? Oh, um, Hans Christian Andersen. No, Thomas Decker. And we've got less than three minutes to go, and here is the starter again. With which pop group was Morris here? Keeble Arthur. <laughs> the Smiths. You better just beat the oldest of that. I can see that, I can see that Stephen has been... Uh, having his headphones on in the tube recently, but he was a bit slow on that. And a bonus of 15 here to Keeble. Um, first of all, wait a minute, here we go. Which bird has varieties known as hammercock, whale-headed, marabou, and adjutant? Tit. No, the stork. <laughs> Second, the stork was the mascot of which make of luxury Spanish motor car, whose models included the Alfonso, the Barcelona, and the Boulogne? Spanish is actually in its name as a motor car. It is Hispano Suiza. And finally, which mm. French based luxury car manufacturer, bought by Hispano Suiza in 1963, built the Royal Type 41, the largest private car ever made, of which only six were ever built? Bugatti. Bugatti had five points oh. correct, and that brings them up to 70. I've got less than two oh. minutes to go, and here's the starter again. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Bugatti, it's more. I want to, I've, I've, I've read out the answer. I'm going to take a so flustered. Yeah. <laughs> you all did brilliantly to interrupt. I read out the answer. Here we go again. <laughs> Give me both the football clubs meeting in a recent match, which either had or had had Kenny Dalglish as graduates fry. Blackburn and Liverpool. Blackburn Rovers and Liverpool, correct, oh, right. meeting at Anfield recently, had both, well, uh, both at one time had Kenny as manager. Blackburn Rovers now had 10 points to fry. A bonus to, to, to the graduates. A bonus of 15. Max Beerbohm said, I was a modest, good-humoured boy. What place did he say had made him insufferable? Oxford. Quite right, <laughs> five points. <Yeah. laughs> Second. <laughs> Less than a minute to go. Second. What sort of boy is Master Jonathan Buttle in the art world? Master Jonathan Buttle in the art world? I have no idea. Anyone near? He is. No oh, idea. the blue boy. The blue, blue boy, boy, correct. Oh, just in time by Gainsborough, five points. And last, which boy in Pickwick Papers says, I want to make the, the your fat the boy, fat the fat fat boy, boy yeah. your flesh creep? Very little time, and here's a starter again for ten. About whom were the following statements made in 1991 by Douglas Hurd? He had a tremendous appetite for foreign affairs as well as real flair for business. By John Smith, he built a great graduate's little. Oh, no, sorry. It was five point penalty to the graduates in question. Not goes on to Keeble. He built a great business empire almost single handed. Mm. Mrs. Van Damme, there's the gong. It was Robert Maxwell. And there's the gong with the score at the graduates. Very good score at 155 and Keeble 70. So well played, the graduates. Applause for them, give them a hand. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon there was a, a bit of ageist, ageist preference, ageist preference emerging from our young audience in the reluctance to clap the graduates, but they did very well. And so did Keeble to hold such a brilliant team, who after all, selected by evolution in the years since appearing on the University <laughs> Challenge, um, to uh, a respectable score. So thank you both for coming on our game, and it is now a good night from Keeble. Good night. Good night. And from the graduates. Good night. Good night. And from me too, and I wish I could say as usual as I used to, until next week or even until next year, but it's just good nights, so to speak, forever. And I hope you have a very good new year. Good night. <laughs>
Coming up on BBC Two's tribute to Granada, Roll On Four O'Clock, a drama by Colin Wellens.